You are listening to the Lucha Central Podcast Network. And now, Lucha Central Weekly. Hello and welcome to the Lucha Central Weekly Podcast. This is the podcast that lets you know all of the latest happening in the world of Lucha Libre. We cover news and events from this past week, talking about Mexico-based promotions and top independents, along with Luchador-related news from throughout the United States. The Lucha Central Weekly Podcast is part of the Lucha Central Podcast Network on LuchaCentral.com. This podcast and others from the network are also available on all major podcast streaming platforms, including iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, iHeartRadio, PodBay, Speaker, and more. And, of course, don't forget our streaming partners at TheChairShot.com. My name is Miranda Morales, and I'm one of the co-hosts of the Lucha Central Weekly Podcast. And let me bring in the rest of the team. Introducing first, he is the dashing one, Mr. Dusty Murphy. Dusty, how are you? I'm doing fantastic. How are you doing, Miranda? I am doing great. And, of course, we got to bring in the third member of this trio. He is, well, who? 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 Who is it? It's the one and only Brendan Barr. That's hey. who. That's me. Someday. Someday I, they will say my name on that show. I'm not even going to say the name of the show. You all know what I'm talking yeah. about. <laughs> yeah. I was uh, <laughs> just sharing that story with someone the other day. And, and their initial reaction was like, aw, like very sad. And I was like, there's nothing to be sad about. <laughs> yeah. I feel like we got more attention for that than anything. <laughs> in you know, anything. Like... So, I hear you. Absolutely. I hear you. And another week. We are now in February. Cannot believe how well, fast 2022 is coming. Coming right at us. Yes. Yeah. It is. It's happening. But we hope you are all staying safe. Thank you again, just always uh, to those who listen to this show. We are very excited uh, to record this week's episode. Uh, and just thank you to all the listeners, whether this is your first time listening or you are a returner. Uh, we just greatly appreciate it. We hope you enjoy the show. We will be giving out our socials at the end, so make sure you reach out to us. If you like what you hear, if you have any feedback, suggestions, comments, all of that, let us know. But, as they say, <laughs> on with the show. So, we are going to get started with News of the Week with Brendan. Hey, uh, so talking about lots of, of 2022 coming at us real fast. Uh, WrestleCon week is coming up, and they're making tons of announcements about luchadors being at various shows. Um, GCW is going to have a show, uh, have a show, and we've talked to over the past week. They're going to have guys like Gringo Loco uh, and um, uh, Psycho Clown, and uh, uh, um, I'm trying to re- remember all of them because I didn't write these down. There's, but we added more because. This was Freedom Week for, if you remember, if a lot of the WWE releases were mm-hmm. were let were able to start announcing they were at shows or appearing at shows, which includes Mas- Mascara Dorada. So we get and we get to call him that again, Dusty. Yeah, Mascara Dorada. <laughs> yeah, yes. Uh, so so uh, GCW has announced him for a couple of shows. I believe he's going to be on the Martinez show as well. I'm just going to be all over the place that weekend. But more imminently, GCW announced Mascara Dorada versus Gringo Loco at the end of this month in Los Angeles. So, uh, uh, they, you know, we're looking at that and we're gonna have, uh, have, have a, 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 a bleh, pardon me, a, a very full GCW show at that in that, in February with, with Luchador stuff. So we're gonna keep an eye on that. Um, but I was doing this quick and dirty, trying to get us some uh, some of the more interesting news announcements. The other one that set my Twitter on fire, and I'm sure you guys saw it on Instagrams and the other stuff, is West Coast Pro Wrestling has dipped their toe into having Lucha in a major way because they announced a three-way featuring Aries, Gringo Loco, and Nick Wayne, who regular listeners of the show will know that Nick Wayne – 
um, may have semi illegally performed for lucha shows up here when he was fourteen or fifteen. I don't, I'm not gonna, you know. Anyway, he allegedly. He's, <laughs> <laughs> we don't really know his age. He could be thirty. So. I think he's. I think he's actually three thirty-year-olds in a Nick Wayne suit. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's going to be an amazing match. Uh, I, I have, in all honesty, I've seen Nick Wayne a few times uh, in lucha events. He works really well with luchadors. He's he's been trained by a luchador up here, and having him with Gringo Loco and Aries is going to be amazing. So. Uh, that's February 11th uh, the, on IWTV. Uh, I just wanted to stick with a couple of the big news ones, so I'm going to move on now to the Indie Roundup and start talking about some stuff going on there. Um, IWRG has has gone back to having lots of shows, so uh, I'm going to start. This was on January 30th in Arena Nalcapan. I'll start halfway through the card here. Uh, we had, uh, Puma de Oro and Tanali in a tag team match against Astro Boy and Freelance. Uh, the, uh, Puma de Oro and Tanali won the match and afterwards started, uh, on the microphone challenging that they want the IWRG tag belts. So, um, pardon me. We, uh, we will see how that plays out, but, uh, they, IWRG has a really robust tag division, so I'm excited anytime people start making moves there. Uh, we have a person by the name of Asion Jackson. I think that's probably an Action Jackson reference, along with Travis Banks against, uh, Dick Angelo 3G and Fulgore. Uh, Travis Banks and Asion Jackson got the win on that one. And then the main event, Hijo del Albrije and Relampagio uh, fought to a draw against Hijo del Fishman and Hijo del Pirata Morgan, which, of course, then resulted in lots of fighting and excitement. Uh, I mean, you're going to have – you can always count on action-packed main event, even with a uh, a draw finish in IWRG. Um, we had some crash action on January 28th from Tijuana, uh, we, they only had six matches. Um, so I'm going to just jump to number two here. Sexy star, the new sexy star, not, uh, not the old one there that people will remember from other shows. It was in a match with Lady Maravilla and later Lady Flammer for the Crash Women's Championship. Sexy Star is your new Crash Women's Champion. Uh, and then we have, uh, Black Danger, Dinamico Oraculo in a trios match against Black Destiny, El Dragon, and El Impostor. And, uh, Black Danger, Dinamico, and Oraculo came out with the win on that. Want to point out that that team has all been at Expo Lucha. So if you've seen them wrestle at Expo Lucha, you have a decent idea what this match shaped up like. Uh, and then we had Hijo del Vikingo and Flip Gordon for the Crash Heavyweight Championship. Nobody cares about that, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Vikingo wound up on top on that one. Uh, and then there was some people that showed up afterwards. Phoenix showed up, uh, to challenge Vikingo. Uh, Conan has, is alleging the match is going to happen in Tijuana. So maybe we'll see that. Uh, Phoenix versus Vikingo anywhere in Mexico or America is going to be a must watch, but also, if you get a chance to see this match with Flip Gordon, you know that's going to be good. And then you would think that would have been the main event, but they still had more matches on the card. Uh, next, we had ACH, Rich Swan, and Willie Mack in, up against Bestia 666, Mecha Wolf, and Ray Horus. Uh, ACH, Rich Swan, and Willie Mack got the got a DQ win on this. But it was for excessive violence, so I don't think any of the arena fans were upset by that DQ. <laughs> um, and it's, uh, I mean, again, you just you can count on the crash and and uh, Mexican indie wrestling to to come up with interesting angles like this. Where I'm not upset that we didn't get a real winner. I just got to see a whole bunch of people fight. 
And I'll, and then last in the main event, the actual main event this time, despite the fact that the, uh, the previous two matches I just talked about to use the old JR thing could have been a main event anywhere. You have Penta L zero M in there in a match against Bandito, Dragon Lee and Jack Cartwheel. And as you might guess, by the way, that I, I announced this one, Penta did win this one, but oh my goodness, Penta Zero M, Bandito, Dragon Lee, Jack Cartwheel is bonus, but I mean, good God. Uh, so that was my indie roundup. I figured I'd just do a, a couple of these because these were big ones this week, this week, but, uh, as always, when we do our, when we announce our socials later, Please come at me with your favorite indie matches, your uh let me know shows that are coming up or shows that you were at. I don't care if you are a luchador, a fan, a, a dog, just tell me about your favorite lucha match and uh we'll throw it out onto the show as best as I can. Well, with that, Brendan, I do want to throw a quick <laughs> plug out to Pro Wrestling Revolution. Uh, because they are going to be having a show coming up this month, uh, February 26th, uh, in San Jose, uh, California. Uh, and they <laughs> announced their lineup, which in and of itself is a stacked, uh, card already. They you always have, are. Keep uh, going. you have, uh, Kratos, uh, from the Border Patrol, who's going to be facing Pro Wrestling Revolution World Heavyweight Champion Ultimo Dragon. Uh, you have your Pro Wrestling Revolution Tag Team Champions, La Migra, who are going to be facing the Legends of Lucha Libre, Psychosis, and Dr. Wagner Jr. Whoa! Yep. <laughs> yeah. That's going to be a, a match. Uh, you have, uh, the patron saint of filth, Christina Von Erie, uh, going to be wrestling Charisma, um, in the show, as well as a three-way match, Viento versus Bestia 666 versus Super Astro Jr. In tag team action, you're going to see Fantasma and El Cucuy versus El Misterioso and El Gavilan. And also in tag team action, you're going to see Papa Esco team up with Vinny Massaro to face Diablo Azteca and Zuka. Wow. Yeah. So I just want to point out that we are getting Christina Von Eri back in a lucha ring for the mm -hmm. first time in a long time. I mean, yes. she did, she did, she even skipped out one year of the, uh, of the, the lucha Expo Lucha, uh, so this is fantastic. Uh, I've been treated to having her up here in the Pacific Northwest and being able to see her in a lot of matches, but this is a chance to see her in a live Lucha match, which, I mean, we've talked about her on this day in Lucha Libre from way back in the day. She was one of the transcendent uh, wrestlers that went down and, and broke through the, the system up there. She was on a path very similar to Taya. Yeah. Um. Stuff happened. Don't Google it. It's not worth it. But, it, you know, if you're in the California area, this is going to be a rare treat. Yes. And then, I mean, you had that other match that was before with, you know, like the clown and stuff. But, you know. <laughs> yes. Uh, you got it's a pretty stacked card. Like super I said, stacked card. super stacked card. So uh, <laughs> if you are interested, you can pick up your tickets at www.luchalibreboletos. That's B-O-L-E-T-O-S dot com. Uh, they are going to be doing a VIP uh Meet and greet, or you can purchase VIP tickets or box seats that include meet and greet with Dr. Wagner Jr. and Psychosis. Um, so that in and of itself, too, to be able to have a great show and an opportunity to meet and greet two legends of Lucha Libre is well worth the money. Um, Pro Wrestling Revolution shows are just fantastic. Uh, they're entertaining. They're energetic. They're exciting. So Please make sure if you are able to be in the San uh, Jose area, if you're able to go, um, or, you know, you have the, the date available, February 26th, make sure you go because you do not want to miss out on such a, a huge event like Pro Wrestling Revolution. 
Yeah, that's going to be big. All right. Well, thank you, Brendan, for news of the week and the Indie Roundup. Up next, you know what time it is. We're going to kick it to Denise Salcedo, who brings us this week's Lucha Central Central. Why should you visit TheChairShot.com? TheChairShot.com is your home for hard-hitting reviews, news, opinion, and analysis with attitude. Why? Because you're smarter than the average fan. TheChairShot.com. Always use your head. Hey everyone, it's Denise Salcedo here in Lucha Central Central with a reminder of where and when to catch all of the great network content this week. Get the full lineup and listen to all of our shows in the podcast network section of LuchaCentral.com. On Tuesdays, Mass Mats and Mayhem takes you inside the world of Lucha Underground as they take you weekly through the series with the benefit of hindsight and the benefit of special guests from the groundbreaking series. Check out the premiere video stream every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern on the Lucha Central YouTube channel and at LuchaCentral.com. Then listen to it on your favorite podcast platform every Wednesday. Tuesday nights live, it's WrestleBoss, where Fabi Chulo talks MMA and pro wrestling with special guests and listener Collins. Visit WrestleBossLive.com Tuesday nights at 7 p.m. Pacific to listen live or call in with questions or download the show on podcast platforms on Wednesdays. Wednesday nights live on Facebook, it's Spanish show La Mesa de los Margaros, giving you both the news and the cheese made from around the lucha world. Special guests and a whole lot of fun make it one of the most talked about shows in Mexico. Thursdays, it's straight out of the bodega with Papo Esco and PWR promoter Gabriel Ramirez as they have guests from throughout the wrestling world pull up to give an inside look into their careers. From indie standouts to television superstars, each week brings a new name and perspective. On Friday, it's your double dose of Lucha Central weekly podcast, one in English y el otro en español. Lucha Central Weekly is where you'll find all the top stories of the week, both inside and out of the ring from Mexico and anywhere luchadores are in action across the globe. Be sure to subscribe and follow all your favorite Lucha Central Network series on your favorite podcast platforms, either by their own series name or subscribe to the Lucha Central Podcast Network show pages to get all of the shows in one easy feed. And please consider giving a rating to help more fans find the shows that you love. For now, this is Denise Salcedo signing off from Lucha Central Central. Have a great week. Lucha-Masks.com by Pro Wrestling Revolution. Bringing you in partnership with Mask Republic. The Lucha Brothers, as well as Japanese legend Ultimo Dragon. Go to lucha-masks.com and fight Lucha Strong with masks from your favorite Lucha legends and pro wrestling revolution luchadores. Stay safe in style and represent your favorite luchador. Get yours now at lucha-masks.com, powered by Pro Wrestling Revolution. And we are back. We are heading into, well... We're running down all of the big promotions and the things that you need to know from this week. And we're going to be doing something we haven't done in quite some time. And that's start off with WWE. We had a fairly big weekend. I don't know if you heard there was something called the Royal Rumble that happened. Uh, so, Dusty, let us know what were any of the lucha elements that uh, happened adjacent to or in the Royal Rumble. Um, well, there weren't very many. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the ones that did happen lot... were pretty big. Yeah, we still have a lot to talk about. So despite teasing it literally for weeks, literally oh one of their longest running stories going into oh. Royal Rumble, Ray and Dominic never interacted in the Rumble. They never They're attempted even... to throw each other no. over the rope. They had no interaction with the Street Profits. Yeah. I, I, I don't know what to say about any of that. Allegedly, plans changed repeatedly. Shane McMahon got fired uh, on the day that we're recording this today um, over the the whole thing because I guess he wanted to get his stuff in, but Brock Lesnar wanted to get his stuff in. That's crazy. Ray was eliminated largely off camera by Otis, who eliminated literally no one else. Like That was his one elimination of the night was Ray, so it meant nothing. Neither Ray nor Dominic eliminated anyone. The 
the whole thing with the Mysterios, it was just disappointing. I, it, it's yeah. like your parents. Like, I'm not even uh, mad. I'm just disappointed. <laughs> like, disappointed. They built it up for weeks, like you said. Like, they got me interested that they might yeah. do something with them. And they did, and they did a nice job of building two different storylines because you had that Street Profit stuff going on. Like, so they could go either way. They could do both. Right. They could do one or the other, or they could do neither. And they wound up doing neither. So, like, yeah. come on. Uh, but we did have Bad Bunny. Bad Bunny <laughs> was great. I mean, yes, great. Hey, he was Bad work. Bunny saving wrestling. I, it still surprises me. So, Beautiful so he, and he's saving wrestling in more ways than one because the rumor to what Dusty mentioned is that the main reason uh, Shane got let go is because they wanted mm-hmm. to keep Bad Bunny happy. Yeah. <laughs> Who's making more money for WWE right now, Shane McMahon yeah. or Bad Bunny? Well, no, mm-hmm. and it's, it's valid, but I just yes. want to point out, like he's he's not just saving wrestling by being the one of the most entertaining things in WWE. He's also removed Shane McMahon from the WWE, uh, yeah. allegedly. allegedly. Yeah. <laughs> and and got Austin Theory into the Elimination Chamber. And, like, there's all kinds of good things going on because of this. Like, mm-hmm. Bad Bunny, and he, in hero. the match, he did a beautiful destroyer. Looked fantastic. He eliminated Sheamus and Dolph Ziggler before being eliminated by Brock Lesnar. But a really cool moment after the match, it was on social media, Rey Mysterio gave his mask from the match to Bad Bunny after the Rumble, and they spoke to each other in Spanish, and it, it was really a cool moment. Ray keeps most of those pay-per-view masks, especially for things like the yeah. Royal Rumble, so to give it away was a big deal and a big yeah. sign of respect. So, I mean, if that gives you any idea how good Bad Bunny was in the ring, like Ray Mysterio gave him his mask. Or at yeah. least so, how much respect for he had for what Bad Bunny wanted to do, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, so. it was very – it was just a cool uh, spot. I know that uh, was a, a clip that was on social media and uh, WWE's YouTube. Very brief, but also very uh, poignant, like you mentioned, for Rey Mysterio to give his uh, mask to Bad Bunny. And Bad Bunny very much understanding um, the the brevity of that um, and really the big deal it was for Ray to be able to do that. And they had, you know, great interactions in the ring, which um, again, when you think about what WWE is looking for, they're looking for that buzz, you know, the next day they want to be featured on entertainment and music websites and TV shows. And how do you do that? By, you know, bringing bad bunny on board. Heck yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's got a lot of, Big name cachet there and they're obviously courting that kind of attention. It's not Lucha relevant, but Johnny Knoxville was in the rumble. There was some <laughs> payback with that where Sami Zayn showed up to the premiere of Jackass forever and they mm-hmm. tased him with a cattle prod and run him off from the red carpet at the premiere. Uh, you know, a lot of dual promotion going on there. Uh, you know, it seems that it may be building to Johnny Knoxville versus Sami Zayn at WrestleMania. And so I think it's likely we could see Bad Bunny at WrestleMania, too, since they're trying to catch that kind of celebrity attention. They've got two nights that can have two celebrity matches. I think Bad Bunny is probably on a course for a WrestleMania match. Oh, yeah. Very very much on that. You know, we saw last year his journey road to WrestleMania start at the Royal Rumble. Exactly. Um, so why yeah. not do and, it again? In the meantime, he's been acting. He played Kitty in Narcos Mexico, did a great job. So, like, his speaking and his promo abilities, I think we're going to see expanding pretty rapidly. His just acting talent in general, I think, is going to be a bigger deal. And I think this could really be a big year for Bad Bunny as a wrestler. I mean, last year we saw the novelty of it, but kind of like David Arquette, when he came back and people started to take him seriously because he put in the work to make it serious, I think we could see something similar from Bad Bunny coming soon. So kind of a, you know, let's keep an eye on Bad Bunny. We'll keep mentioning (laughs) everything we know on the show. Yeah. Yeah, and, and and I believe, 
Go ahead. No, I was going to ask uh, just real quick. Like, I don't, I don't remember if you mentioned it or not. He finished in like the top five, right? He was one of yes, the last five. He was like twenty mm-hmm. sixth eliminated, I believe. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, yeah, big placement too. I just wanted like that. It showed the respect they had for for him as far as the book, even with Shane McMahon uh, possibly having done weird booking, they still kind of put him in that uh, that position. Yeah. And we also had Raw this week. We had the Mysterios on. We first we had the Miz versus Dominic. This was little more than a two minute match just to set up the story that the Miz was able to outsmart Ray Mysterio. Ray Mysterio was at ringside. Miz goaded him. Ray Mysterio got ejected. The Miz took advantage of it, pinned Dominic. He lost. That was pretty much the whole match. <laughs> and I mean, that was it. Then later, the, I guess you could call it the main event. It was the final match of the night was AJ Styles against Rey Mysterio. This was much more my type of thing. Really fun match. It wasn't like the best match of all time, but it's pretty much exactly what you'd expect from a 10 minute raw match between these two. Like it was really fun, really good, better than most of what's on raw. And things were pretty evenly matched throughout the match. You know, no, no advantage, maybe a slight advantage towards Ray Mysterio until he had a picture perfect 619. Looked like he was going to get the win. He climbed to the top rope for the frog splash, but AJ sat up like Dracula in the coffin and the frog splash just became a belly flop, (laughs) missed him by just mere millimeters. And afterwards, AJ kind of snatched the momentum. He is able to get a Styles clash for the win. Both Mysterios lost again on Monday night. I mean, I (laughs) I don't know where this one was going. There's a famous story about a writer showing Seth this really cool idea they had for a match. And Seth saying, okay, but who who, who does it put over? Like, you know, who who gets over Mm -hmm. from this? And so I feel that way about these matches. Like, if, yeah, they have to serve you know, a purpose. Yeah. And, yeah, and, yeah. Yeah. To what reason? And I, I, Royal, I'll be honest. Royal Rumble was the first like start to finish WWE show I had watched in one sitting in a long time. Yes. And usually Same. I watch the relevant matches because it's become so tedious and it's things like this. There's no storyline reason. There's no, nobody gets any, you know, rub from it. It, you feel like you have no return on your investment with WWE right now. And it's really sad. Maybe, you know, they'll turn out of it, but right now it's just getting worse and worse every week. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I would say that the, the women's rumble was more. Yes. Uh, exciting. The women's rumble was great. Yes, you know, having, even though they had announced a lot of the, um, quote unquote surprise entrance ahead of time, um, just even that anticipation of seeing, you know, if Mickey James was going to come out with the Impact Knockouts title, which she did and, and which they acknowledge, you know. And her um, Impact theme. Yes, and her Impact theme. Um, you know, the beginning, uh, with one and two with Sasha and Melina. Um, even though Melina was only there for a cup of coffee, you could just, you know, feel yeah. just hearing some that music things. again, though. Yeah. It was yeah. so cool. Yeah. It was yeah. exciting. <laughs> she could still do the splits. Like she, oh, yeah. yeah, it was incredible. Yeah. So I, I feel like, you know, even with the surprise of Rhonda, um, and, you know, seeing where it could go, I feel like there was a lot more anticipation and suspense in the women's rumble than the men's. Um, once you knew how things ended with, uh, you know, Brock versus Bobby, you, we already had a feeling that we knew how that was going to go. Um, you know, for whatever, however you feel about it. But um, same here. I it was the first WWE show I fully watched in quite some time. Um, and there was aspects of it that were enjoyable, aspects that were predictable, um, but also still enjoyable. So, you know, you, at this point, you know what you're getting with WWE, you know, whether you can stomach it. And, and deal with it. I don't know. That's for each person <laughs> to decide. I, I feel like 
if we're only going to watch one WWE show a year, this is wasn't a bad choice because I too no. kind of this was the one that I watched most of. Yeah, yes. well, yeah. It, it's like a tradition. People have Royal mm-hmm. Rumble parties. Like my family yeah, yeah. always watched Royal Rumble. You know, even more than WrestleMania, I look forward to Royal Rumble. Yeah, and same. By far the best gimmick pay per view. Yes. A hundred percent, because I think even though every year, you know, it's wondering who's going to win, the Royal Rumble as a theme is still, I mean, there after, you know, 30 years. And um, it really does set that road to WrestleMania. So I always look forward to the Royal Rumble. I would agree, probably out of all the, the big pay-per-views outside of WrestleMania, it's the one that I make sure I watch every year. Um, and, and it's still fun, you know, I know there was, of course it's, it's, you know, wrestling Twitter and wrestling internet, uh, where, you know, people were unhappy with the show or with the, um, rumble winners, but, you know, uh, again, you, you should expect it. And also too, I mean, even especially now with the fact that there've been so many releases, it should, it, that should have been your first sign that this year's Rumble winners were not going to be up and comers. They were going to be established stars because they got rid of most of their up and comers. <laughs> they still need to build the up and comers that are going to win maybe next year or the year after that or the year after that. So. They are what I like to call in the rebuilding phase, and they were going to pull on, on you know, those established stars that they knew could draw. Yeah. Huh? That is it for this week's WWE. Let's jump into AEW. Yeah, kind of a light week this week. Not a whole lot of Lucha news. But on Dynamite this week, we did have the Kings of the Black Throne defeating Penta and Pac. Pac showed up with a blindfold. He was led to the ring. But it was all to try to buffalo the Kings of the Black Throne. He pretty much instantly whipped the blindfold off. It it was actually a pretty fun match. Nothing spectacular, but fun. It looked like the Pac and Pinto were going to win. They kind of had the upper hand throughout the match until Brody King pushed Pac off the top rope during a Fear Factor attempt before Pac kind of fell into the ring. Then Al- or Malachi Black misted Penta, uh, who was the legal partner at that point, before they hit the dual Dante's Inferno for the win. It seems to be setting up both Pac versus Malachi Black in a big match, or, and or, I guess, the Kings versus the Lucha Bros in a big match. And I would be okay with either or both. Like, I think it's getting pretty exciting. Malachi Black has got one of the hottest things going. The... You know, now that Brody King is there, the Kings of the Black Throne is one of the obviously biggest things on AEW. Uh, it gets a lot of attention on social media. I see a lot of people talk about them. Uh, just this week I saw Malachi shirt. Uh, you know, just a lot of stuff going on with the, or somebody wearing one in public. I mean, just <laughs> a lot of, you know, like energy and, you know, like, anticipation i feel like with them and people being excited for them that it's building up and so to have the and obviously pack i feel like was a placeholder for phoenix who's injured mm-hmm. you know on dynamite a couple of weeks ago he'll be back soon but i really think this is building to the lucha bros versus the kings of the black throne and that's about as high profile as it can get right now in AEW and not be in the title picture for a tag team So I'm excited for the Lucha Bros on this one. I think those will be some incredible matches. But other than that, we really didn't have a lot of Lucha content this week for AEW. Usually we have a lot more from them. But light week this week, we'll see what happens next week. Yeah. I do believe, is it later this week? Is it going to be on Friday or getting uh, Mercedes Martinez versus Thunder Rosa? I believe it is, yes, this yes. Friday on Rampage. Yes, on Rampage, Well, yes. this coming Friday from when we record. You'll probably yes. have seen it by the time you hear this. But, yeah, we'll be covering that one next week for sure. Yeah, yeah very. That match, when I saw that, was like, yes, I'm, I, I'm going to be watching that match. Yeah, that's exactly my type of match, too. Like, you know it's going to be a banger. <laughs> <laughs> it is going to go down. 
about to get real. About to get real. These two women are gonna have some fuck some shit up. Yep. <laughs> well, make sure uh for both your WWE news and your AEW uh results, you can go to luchacentral.com. And that way you can stay up to date on everything that's happened on this week's episodes. Speaking of this week's episodes, we have the finale of MLW Azteca, uh, the end of this force part mini series or episodic epilogue or this, you know, little chunk of wrestling has come to an end and uh, do not worry, we will share some, you know, breaking news that came out, uh, on MLW as far as when we will expect to see Azteca underground return. But as far as this week's matches, we started off with EJ Nanduka versus Adrian Quest. For those of you who are West Coasters, you will be fairly familiar with Adrian Quest, a staple out here. Uh, very familiar with, a uh, Lucha style of wrestling. Um, but, Unfortunately, if you are an Adrian Quest fan, this may not be the match for you. <laughs> this is essentially built as a squash match to really elevate EJ Nanduka, um, to really showcase him. Um, there was an obvious size and strength advantage to EJ Nanduka. Um, the Adrian Quest 2 is really great in the ring. Um, so he played his part very well, but just this match was literally just a few minutes. <laughs> but in shut case as they call it in the legal world. Um, but still, you know, a way to kick off uh, MLW Azteca. Um, our next match was Extreme Tiger versus Mecha Wolf. And this one was a super physical match from both of them. Mecha Wolf in particular is a super physical type of wrestler. No big kind of, um, you know, uh, tools or, or weapons used. A lot of it was just their physical bodies being thrown all over the place. Uh, Mecha Wolf had a, a really good suicide dive through the middle rope. And Mecha Wolf did win this match by throwing Extreme Tiger up, almost in like a chokeslam style, and uh, landing a really big kick to his back. Um, so I enjoyed this match as far as fairly brutal, really physical, but you also had some aerial elements in there. Everything looked super hard. Everything that they landed hits look, really look really hard. Um, and so that was, uh, again, a, a great match as well. For our main event, we had trios action. Uh, Laredo Kid, Octagon Jr., and AAA Mega Champion Ijo de Vikingo teamed up with, or teamed up to face, uh, Ray Oris, Viano 3 Jr., and MLW National Openweight Champion Alex Kane. The story behind this was that Alex Kane was not at all happy to be in this trios match. Alex Kane is much more of a lone wolf. And was not thrilled on this idea to have to have partners and to be facing uh, this trio. So you had some dissension and tension in that match, but also you did have, you know, all of the greatest hits as far as aerial feats um, and great you know, triple uh, teamwork, especially between Ijo del Vikingo, Laredo Kid, and Octagon Jr. Really, too, throughout this match, commentary really played up. Again, Azteca Underground has also been a way to introduce American audiences to the world of Lucha Libre. So they really talked about the family lineage um, with everyone in this match and how especially um, uh, for people like uh, Ijo de Vikingo, uh, Octagon Jr., and Viano 3 Jr., this is literally in their blood. And so how much that... Uh, plays a part in uh, not only how they wrestle, but how early they start. And so you get both the aspects of a great match with a, more of that background into Lucha Libre. Um, Alex Kane left the match prior to an ending, leaving Viano 3 uh, Jr. and Ray Oris to uh, finish the match on their own. Ijo de Vikingo, though, again, the star of this um, with really the smoothness of his aerial moves is 
still insane. Um, and it makes sense that Alex Kane stepped out because you have your two champions on opposite ends. You know, this is an MLW show, so you don't want your champion to quote unquote look weak, but you also have the AAA mega champion and pretty much one of the biggest stars in all of Lucha Libre, and you don't want to make him quote unquote look weak. Uh, so Vikingo yeah. wins with the three, uh, 630 Centon, I believe on Viano 3 Jr., who got the, he, he pinned. Um, but this is again different than the second match where it was a lot more aerial, a lot more faster pace. Um, but there was a little bit of story there when you have, you know, three, five luchadors and, and then an American wrestler in there, um, which I think they actually played off well um, because that is a little bit of an odd pairing, but very traditional as far as technicals versus Rudo style. So I definitely recommend, once again, this week's uh, MLW Azteca Underground. Storyline-wise, again, we are still continuing to see some of the storyline aspects between Cesar Duran uh, and the Dynasty. Uh, when we did see, uh, you know, Richard Holiday uh, out and about, um, kind of, you know, playing coy with what he's up to. He also um, was um, returned uh, to, he was kidnapped and then returned back to the MLW arena with a note um, regarding uh, future matches uh, that we should expect in, in upcoming episodes of MLW Fusion. But we have more of this continued uh, conflict between the dynasty, Alex Hammerstone and Richard Holiday versus uh, Cesar Duran and kind of his dark business matters. Um, also, an entertaining aspect of uh, tonight's show was uh, breaking news regarding the Von Erichs. Quote unquote breaking news. If you've already read the spoilers about what happened at Blood and Thunder, uh, the Von Erichs tested positive for COVID and were not able to compete at Blood and Thunder. Um, so we would see hopefully in the upcoming weeks who 5150 is going to face. They did mention as far as 5150's travel to Puerto Rico to become the new IWA Puerto Rico tag team champions. And if you've listened to our interview with Danny Limelight, you know that this is all a part of Danny's master plan to capture every tag team title he can get his hands on. So now him and Slice Boogie are not only your MLW Tag Team Champions, but they are now your IWA Puerto Rico Tag Team Champions and are looking forward to facing, well, whoever they can get their hands on um, at Blood and Thunder, whether that's the Von Erics, whether that's the Los Parks, whether that be... Anybody else, they are ready to face them. So 5150 promos are one of my favorite things to watch um, on MLW television. So give me more of them. Give me more. Give me more than 5150. Um, Maybe we'll just with, get them back on the show and they can just do 30 minutes of promos for you. I'm fine with that. A <laughs> million percent fine with that. A hundred percent fine. Thought you might be. Stay tuned, everybody. We, yes. It might be a thing. <laughs> Uh, but again, with that, just know that MLW Fusion returns next week. But this isn't the last we've seen of Azteca Underground. MLW announced um, previously that they are going to be in Dallas on March 31st. They've also added another date for April 1st. Now, the interesting part about this is that the graphic in which they uh, announced this had the Azteca Underground logo, but commentary just said that MLW um, has a second night in Dallas. So commentary didn't necessarily align with the uh, graphic, but it does look like they've announced specifically, at least in media, that the April 1st show will be an Azteca Underground show. Whoa. So... Um, we kind of see this cycle again. Uh, MLW Azteca Underground was a series of four episodes based off of their tapings uh, and work with Crash Lucha Libre and the uh, extra filming that they did while they were in Mexico. It's very possible that the next taping uh, on April 1st is to set up a new 
series of Azteca Underground episodes that would air hopefully um, May, June, sometime this summer. I'm super excited by that possibility. Oh, I believe that the uh, fusion episodes that will be coming up are going to be of what was filmed for Blood and Thunder. And as we've talked about previously, there were some great matches announced for Blood and Thunder, um, including the introduction of the minis to MLW, <laughs> uh, including, you know, Roxy being featured uh, as she was still a Ring of Honor Women's Champion. Uh, so, again, uh, this format with MLW, if you like kind of things that are moving a little bit more fast paced, um, having a blend of both storyline, but also just kind of big league matches. MLW only one hour a week it's great to get into and both you know a hybrid of styles as well not just uh, American but you have Lucha Libre you have uh, MMA you have so much so um, real quick though what was your first kind of initial now that we've had your first four episodes of Azteca Underground I want to get your guys' thoughts on your thoughts of, of really these first episodes or, or this series um is this what you expected for azteca underground were you hoping for something different or something more uh dusty i'll have you start um i expected it to have a little more of the kind of supernatural soap mm-hmm. opera feel that lucha underground did yeah uh it's not necessarily a bad thing that it doesn't mm-hmm. it was just what i anticipated yeah. uh but i do love cesar duran i mean like that's probably been my favorite part he has been so consistent uh the actor luis fernandez gill that does cesar he is so good in this role like he is mm-hmm. the perfect idea for a figurehead in wrestling it's the best figurehead that i think's been in wrestling between this and lucha underground for sure that maybe in the last 20 years like he does an excellent job yeah. william regal could give him a run for his money but i i would honestly pick cesar duran i okay. really would i have to ask dusty how does he compare to attitude era vince though Ooh. Ooh. well <laughs> i mean well that's the genetic jackhammer yeah yeah <laughs> he's like the latino vince mcmahon you know? yeah just It'll a little bit yeah. More mysterious, but less of a genetic jackhammer. <laughs> yeah. But you know, like if he ripped his shirt off and he was like really cut and just ran in the ring and choked the shit out of somebody and was like the dirtiest fighter, like I could totally see it, you know, like biting people on the nose. Cesar Duran, you know, he could be the, the, yeah. the hidden weapon in all of this. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I did. So I got I have to echo what what Dusty said about uh, for me the and it's not a bad thing but my expectation was that the tone was going to be different yeah. like this the tone still feels very MLW which mm-hmm. is not a again it's not a bad thing especially for those that are already MLW but for some reason in my head when I heard Azteca Underground I was expecting something a little different maybe a little hmm. darker maybe a little grittier I I wasn't expecting magic because I know Court Bauer likes sport based presentation, which I I endorse, so I'm not gonna be down on that. But I was uh I was thinking we were gonna get a considerably different tone and yes. that was more Well they know. set it up that way. Even yeah. in all the teasers, even you know, at the very beginning when we did especially Alicia 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 Atoot's kind of expose on Caesar Duran, yeah. it literally yeah. tied into the last days of what was happening in Boyle Heights. Sure and did. so the fact that they didn't delve into that more and they instead focused more on this dynasty versus Caesar Duran storyline, they they deviated from what potentially could have been very interesting and intriguing of, you know, more yeah. of of the Lucha Underground uh, continuation to a more MLW solely focused storyline. That yeah. is, as you know, you mentioned, Brendan, a little bit more realistic, a little bit more sports based, less yeah. drama, soap opera, supernatural base. So yeah. if they hadn't already started in that direction and kind of teased us with it, I would have said, OK, you know, yeah. this is the new direction. But they literally just dangled that in our faces. 
it's true. I, I thank you for putting your finger on it. I knew there was a reason that I was feeling that way, but I couldn't. Uh, you, yeah, they they had they had given us those elements. They'd given they teased that we were going to get more of a Lucha Underground feel, and then they it feels like they kind of pulled that back a little bit. Yeah, it does. Well, don't you worry. You know we're going to be covering uh, MLW each and every week right here on the Lucha Central Weekly Podcast. Uh, we'll be excited to see what happens uh, after the uh, the resurgence revival. Not even revival because it you know didn't really go away. <laughs> That's just the format of MLW. The return of Fusion next week. Well. Up next, you know it, you love it, it's that time. It is This Week in Lucha Libre History with Dusty. Yeah, that's right. It's time for This Week in Lucha Libre History. Be sure to check in at LuchaCentral.com every single day for this day in Lucha Libre by Pep Carrera for information, birth dates, anniversaries, matches of the day, amazing videos, and even more. And it's all about Lucha Libre. LuchaCentral.com, your centralized place for all things. Lucha Libre. This week we chose February the 5th, 1999. Eo Del Santo and Negro Casas won the CMLL World Tag Team Championship after beating Scorpio Jr. and Bestia Salvaje at the Arena Coliseo in Mexico City. Scorpio and Bestia had been tag champs for around four months at this point, having won the tournament over some pretty big names in November 1998 for the f- titles. Prior to this, they had been in a trio with Eo Del Santo, which when he came out and he was with these guys and they were up against Negro Casas, his, when Eo Del Santo returned, there was a little riot. Like it would be like comparing it to the NWO, kind of Hogan showing up at Bash at the Beach. Like there was a literal riot at Arena Mexico over the whole thing. Like they were pissed. And afterwards, you know, after some time, uh, Scorpio Jr. and Bestia turn on Santo, which turns Santo face, and the Negro Casas runs in for the save, and he ends up tag teaming with Santo to, you know, get their revenge on these two bad guys. So this was a big deal, big, big money feud, kind of a blood feud at the time, had remarkable fan investment. This match, two out, or best two out of three falls, Third fall in an interesting twist, Santo and Negro Casas won the titles by disqualification after Scorpio Jr. They had a crooked ref. He was holding Negro Casas' arms behind his back. Scorpio Jr. crashed the elbow from the top rope into the ref instead of into Negro Casas, knocked him out. A second ref ran in and called the match in favor of Negro Casas and Io Del Santo on a disqualification and gave them the titles. But they declined to accept the belts because they didn't win them fair and square. And (laughs) they would never go on to capture the titles as a team. They'd get a rematch Mm. in a week. They lose the rematch. It goes on to an Apuestas match um, at the Anniversario show where uh, Io Dos Santo Negro Casas win. But they, they never get the titles. And so that's kind of the the story. Brendan, what did you think of this match? <laughs> well, uh, off air, we discussed the fact that I hadn't gotten a chance to actually watch it yet. Um, but uh, it is it, – this is classic EMLL slash CMLL yes. sort of. Yeah. sort it's of very old school. Uh, yes. Super old school. Um, the, I can tell from the description you gave the pacing was going to be a little different than what people are expecting with the more modern trios or – Tag match. Uh, it is two out of three falls, so the first fall was probably longer than any of the other two falls. Yes. Um, mm-hmm. But um, th- that ending is is classic because uh, what what you've done there is you've you've elevated Santos character again, where he's like, "No, I'm too good. I need to I need to to win this the right way." And even if he never gets it again, he's the, the fans are still going to be like he has the honor of knowing that he he could have won it and didn't. Uh, well, well, your your heels still come off looking legit, so they're they're going. The fans are invested in seeing all of these guys wrestle again against each other, against other people. Like they probably followed the, this up the next week with the the. 
the tag team champs against two uh against another uh really over the top like uh Technicos team. Uh and and the fans were probably just as invested in the idea of them losing then, even though that in the back of their head they're like, This isn't fair, Santo needs to win it. And and that I love that. I love that, that we don't see a lot of that kind of stuff anymore. When we see weird endings, even in AEW where they they try to be more about story, we usually see a weird ending that everybody understands why it's a weird ending. They're just like, Yeah, you know, Chris Jericho couldn't lose this one because he's been losing a lot lately or whatever. And so it's just generally kind of a cool match. Uh, if you, I, again, I said this off air, but I'll, I'll repeat it for the, the listeners here. If you are into modern Lucha Libre, this is going to be, uh, differently paced and different, different styles, but I feel like it will be worth your time to sit through this match, even if you feel a little kind of tuned out at first, because it is going to be slower, to kind of get a better appreciation for what had the the wrestling has evolved into now. So, like, you know, this this is going to be a good one to do it, because all four of these guys are, are legends of this, this style. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Uh, I've taken a bunch of time. Miranda, go ahead. Give us your thoughts. Sorry. Well, no, I, I just exactly <laughs> want to echo what both of you had talked about. I, and, and Dusty and I kind of talked about this off air because I tried watching this match a few times today. And it was, again, I live in now the modern age. I'm very, you know, much a, a now, 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 go, go, go. So I am so much used to right. and tend to like more faster paced matches. So this was very much to my understanding, a, a super traditional CMLL, you know, two out of three, more, you know, slower paced. But one thing that we did talk about, too, um, and as Dusty talked about at the beginning, was this is much more of a storyline driven match, whereas yeah. I was asking more uh, about the differences between, say, CMLL and AAA, which are very much the equivalents of, say, our AEW and WWE, yeah. and CMLL being more traditionally storyline-based matches uh, and, and content. And that is something that, as a lot of fans, and for me in particular, I like storylines, but when... In, in Lucha Libre, I've just been so much more programmed to the big bangers, the put yep. together things, you know, the, the flash, the bang. And so, um, to, you cookie know, sheets. And, yeah, cookie yeah. sheets. Yeah. <laughs> and her, you know, like, uh, at 360s and, and all these things, you know. But, um, you know, I do feel like historically it's very interesting in the context of Dusty mentioned with especially Hijo de Santo and this kind of being on the return of, of his heel turn, which truly was, you know, the equivalent of, of Hulk Hogan, you know, uh, turning mm-hmm. on Hulkamania to have yeah. Hijo de Santo turn heel uh, and, and, you know, coming out of the other side of that in this uh, after this match, but also in result of the disqualification and, and holding true of, you know, we didn't win this, so we're not going to take the belt. Um, but also just the style of CMLL and why, um, again, you know, maybe for wrestling fans, just like you have your own preferences for different wrestling promotions, the same thing happens in Lucha Libre as well. Um, and why aesthetically, you know, it's, it's, always interesting to see different companies and the matches that they put together and ultimately too why maybe cmll doesn't necessarily get a lot of the flash and the attention as triple a or even some of the other more you know smaller promotions like an iwrg or a crash um or lucha libre vanguardia because you know where did people's attention lie they lie you know in more of the big bangers in the fast pace um, in, you know, some maybe quicker matches. So, uh, to each is their own, but I think historically it is important, uh, you know, to acknowledge this match for what it did, uh, for yeah. all four of their careers, legends, of course, in all of their rights. Um, and especially if you learn more about the history between these four, it's a lot more interesting than what meets the eye. I do want to come back around for a point. Uh, modern CMLL, like the stuff that I will be talking about later in the show, 
unfortunately, much like your comparison to the WWE, has taken a more cynical stance of we are going to just put on old-fashioned shows for tourists and traditional wrestling fans. There's a lot less storyline that's going on. Sometimes it gets teased and then dropped. Uh, I'm, and I'm just saying this to set expectations for people that want to, like, if you tune in on a Friday night to watch CMLL, you will still get great wrestling. You may not get as much story-driven stuff as we're talking about here because they have, in my opinion, cynically – kind of just change their format a little bit more in the modern age to be more about just uh entertaining fans with uh nostalgia. Very interesting. Well, we will get to see Malone in just a little bit. But before we do that, Brennan, can you let our listeners know what else that they can find on Abs- com? Absolutely. Let's do this thing. If you're listening to this, and you haven't visited LuchaCentral.com, it's time to do it. LuchaCentral.com is your online home for Lucha Libre, where you can get all of the top news in English and in Spanish, find the best curated video content, and original content not seen anywhere else. Find when Lucha Libre events would be happening in your area. Find photo galleries from top photographers covering Lucha Libre around the world. It's a place to have your voices heard from weekly polls to annual awards seen and read by top executives in all of the major Lucha Libre promotions across the globe. On top of all of this, it's free. Still, that's always my favorite part in this bit. It's free. You get all this information. You get this, the the match of the day, all of this at LuchaCentral.com, your centralized place for all things Lucha Libre. This week in NXT, we did have a little bit of Lucha Libre content, as we, you know, talked about. Not a whole lot, but enough to pique your interest. Uh, first off, we did have Raquel Gonzalez versus Cora Jade. If you've been following the storyline, well, Cora Jade's been kind of a thorn in Raquel Gonzalez's side. Cora Jade pushing and pushing Raquel to team up with her uh, to be a tag team for the uh, Women's Dusty Classic. Raquel Gonzalez not interested. She's been there. She's done that. And by the way, Cora Kid is Cora Jade is just a kid. What can she do? Well, this <laughs> week we found out. Um, you know, Raquel Gonzalez. She really started off this match. Uh, again, I mean, we talk about size. If you thought, uh, Adrian Quest versus EJ Nanduka was a size <laughs> difference, differential, uh, watch this match. Um, <laughs> she, she big. She, she big. big. <laughs> Compared to Cora Jade, who is tiny. Um, but you know what? Cora Jade doesn't necessarily have in, in size or in strength. She made up with a lot of her holds and maneuvering. Um, she's kind of like a little slippery, uh, you know, uh, octopus, uh, where you, she had, uh, looked like she had tentacles. She was able to kind of grasp on and hold on to Raquel on several different occasions. Um, but ultimately, well, you had Big Mommy Cool, uh, Raquel Gonzalez hit her with the Chingona bomb for the win. Afterward, though, it looked like Raquel was going to leave the ring, but went back in, uh, and helped, uh, Cora up and accepted her offer to team up, uh, at the Dusty Classic. So Yay. they are the first official team. For the Women's Dusty Classic, we will hopefully hear more news soon, um, likely after the Men's uh, Dusty Classic ends um, in a, a few weeks. So, a uh, first official team, but uh, again, who knows? I mean, this is shades of Raquel Gonzalez and Dakota Kai coming together last year to win. Um, we know how that ended, so hopefully history doesn't repeat itself. <laughs> and... For our main event, this was set up last week. We had Legado de Fantasma, Raul Mendoza, and Joaquin Wilde versus Braun Breaker, your NXT champion, and his tag team partner, Tommaso Ciampa. And, I mean, one, I have to admit, the teamwork between Braun Breaker and Tommaso Ciampa was really a lot better than I expected. Um, 
still Raul Mendoza and Joaquin Wilde have such great chemistry. Um, I love the sequence when they're doing the hot tags in and out, uh, back and forth or rapid tags in and out, um, really isolating their opponent in their corner and rapid moves back and forth in and out. Um, I think it's becoming one of their signature moves and it's something that I really, really like from them. Uh, but, on the other side, we talked about uh, ups and downs last week with Legado de Fantasma. You also had uh, Tommaso Ciampa and Braun Breaker do some awesome uh, vertical suplexes <laughs> that just looked really cool. Um, so, you know, that was a, a really entertaining aspect of this match. Santos Escobar and Electra Lopez were on the outside. Santos Escobar is always kind of being that unknown wild card factor. You didn't know how or if he was going to uh, distract or interfere um, and if that was going to cause a distraction for Braun Breaker. Um, but at the end, uh, you were going to see, um, it looked like apparently, Ra- Ra- uh, Ra- Joaquin Wilde, um, on the top rope, um, and he was pushed by Tommaso Ciampa onto the announce table that left Raul Mendoza alone for the pin by Braun Breaker. Um, Santos not happy. Uh, Braun Breaker pretty much laying the belt down saying, I'm ready whenever you are. And Santos keeps saying, on my time, when I'm ready. So he's probably not very happy with Joaquin and Raul, um, but that's for a later date. Uh, but still, main event on this week's NXT, a really great, entertaining match. And again, Joaquin, Wild, and Raul Mendoza are pretty much one of the best tag teams in all of NXT. And they could go with anybody. And they played their part really, really well. Competitive matchup, even though you kind of knew who was going to win, um, great chemistry, great teamwork, but they also made uh, Braun Breaker and Tommaso Ciampa look like a million bucks. So, we'll continue to see what happens on NXT. Uh, of course, don't forget your NXT results are listed on LuchaCentral.com. And our final news item of this week's show, Brendan, you already teased it, CMLL. Yes, well, they're back to doing regular shows. Um, they did. I, I'm still a big fan of their Friday shows, which seems to be a little more about building up story. They'll do tournaments. They'll do that sort of. Uh, they'll do all kinds of things a little more on the Friday nights. Um, they they had a micros match to start off the night. Uh, just real quick, Micro Jamilio Diablo one and uh, Micro Diablo yeah Jamilio Diablo two. Got a win over Atamo and Chamuel. Um, then you had a, a, a match with Maggio Blancas, Magnus uh, Rugido against Electro, Electrico, Flyer, and Oro Jr. Uh, Maggio Blanca, Magnus, and Rugido came out on top of that. Then you had the full-size Gemello Gia, Diablos. Uh, partnered with Sagrado against Dark Panther, Esfinge, Espirito uh, Negro. Uh, the, the Rudos took that one. Jamilio Diablo, Diablo, one and two, and Sagrado. Here's where we start getting into some some of the um, really fun stuff. Here we had a match with Stuka Jr., Titan, Gran Guerrero, Sobranario Jr., Templario, Atlantis Jr. Cavernario, Volador Jr., Negro Cassis, and Dragon Rojo Jr. This was for the Kings of the Air, the Reyes del Aire. <laughs> um, Stuka Jr. came out on top on this one. It, it is a, it was a tournament. You did have your, uh, your, your rumble to, to style match to, to determine placement and then individuals went against each other. And, uh, let me read my notes here. Uh, Stuka won. Yeah, Stuka did come out on top, but the focus is more on, uh, it was more on kind of a man, a, a restart and, uh, and, a, and an apuestas match. So the, they were trying to, to kind of get the audience more worked up to build up more storyline. Didn't quite happen this time, but again, they're, they're trying. They're playing around with different stuff. Kind of cool. 
the Raisdale Air tournament is, uh, I always liked the, and they do tournaments. Uh, so this was a big part of the show, uh, was a uh, 25 minutes worth of entertainment. I, uh, it's usually going to go up on YouTube a little bit later. And then after that, we followed up with what is now probably a classic matchup here. Mystico, the old school Mystico against Ultimo Guerrero with, uh, Mystico coming out on top on this one. Uh, he, he, uh, Mystico had some microphone afterwards, said this is a, a big win for him. Uh, and he even mentioned that Ultimo Guerrero is in charge of CMLL. So, uh, he, he, uh, demanded a mass versus hair match, but kind of, uh, it, it was kind of hinted at from what, uh, other people are saying that, Ultima Guerrero is probably going to refuse it and use uh, his political power to do so. So they're 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 doing something interesting here. Also, Mystico versus Ultimo Guerrero in an Apuestas match. Yes, please. I mean, I will uh, watch that at any time. Like, give me that. I, I don't. I'll do one of your weird pay per views. Please, please give me that match. Uh, but they, yeah, that was our our CMLL show. That was uh, Friday, January twenty eighth from Arena Mexico. Uh, if, again, as always, if you want more CMLL, if you're interested in this CMLL experience, like we were talking about in the, uh, This Week in Lucha, uh, please let me know. I will happily add more results. They do shows all weekend long, uh, at Arena Mexico, Guadalajara, uh, other, other areas. I have lots of results that I can do. I just don't know what you guys want to hear. So let me know. And that's my CMLL roundup for this week. Thank you, Brandon. And that does it for this week's episode of the Lucha Central Weekly Podcast. Don't forget to check out LuchaCentral.com, your centralized place for all things Lucha Libre. You can check out Lucha Central on social media as well, at Lucha Central on Facebook and Instagram, and at LuchaCentral.com on Twitter. You can also check out Lucha Central's YouTube page that has hours upon hours of exclusive content like matches and interviews that you're not going to find anywhere else. While you're at it, go ahead and follow us on social media. Dusty, can you let our listeners know where they can find you? Yeah, I am on Facebook at facebook.com slash Dusty Murphy, and I am on Instagram at Dusty Murphy. And Brendan, where can our listeners find you? I am 321 T-Shirt Guy. That's the numbers, 321 T-shirt guy is all spelled out. I am on Facebook. I am on Instagram. And I am all over the Twitters. And me, Miranda Morales, you can find me on Instagram and Facebook at the hashtag Miranda, hashtag spelled out. And don't forget, if you are listening to this show on one of your favorite podcast streaming platforms, Google, Spotify, uh, iTunes, uh, Podbay, Speaker, iHeartRadio, well, you can subscribe, rate, and review. Subscribe and get a notification every time a new episode of the Lucha Central Weekly Podcast drops. You can leave a five-star rating and a review. Let us know your thoughts. Share us, share with us your thoughts on the show, uh, on our social media, or when you leave a rating uh, and a review. Uh, let us know what topics you like, what you don't like, what you think we should cover more, what we should cover less. Whatever it may be, let us know. We always love to hear your feedback. And with that, we are out of here doing a little celebration dance as we wrap up <laughs> today's show. Thank you so much for listening, as always, uh, whether it's your first time, second time, ninth time, uh, 50th time. Thank you for joining us. You know we will be back next week to share with you the week that was in Lucha Libre. So for Dusty Murphy and Brendan Barr, this is Miranda Morales. Thank you all, and we will be with you next week.